Hello everyone and welcome to your Tuesday Thoughts uh, Tarot video. I hope you're all well. Uh, this is recording, just checking. Today is Tuesday the 10th of September 2024 and I'm going to do a tarot reading again just for your entertainment, just to check out the energy of the week ahead and see if I can help by reading the cards, delivering a message in the hopes that it helps you in some way. I've decided just to change the venue slightly, as in I'm just a, the other side of the room, really, um, than you're used to seeing. Uh, I'm burning some incense. I just saw a little fleck of the ash of incense just go past there. And I'm going to read you tarot from my mixed deck. Uh, when I do my regular personal uh, bookings, I use a deck that is not mixed. So major and minor arcana are not mixed in my personal readings. Um, but with this one, I just mix the whole deck together and see what comes through. So I'm just giving them a little bit of a shuffle. I hope you're all well. I hope life is treating you well as the seasons change. Uh, if you're following me on social media, you'll know I've done a massive big clear out, a declutter, and I still have a way to go. There's still more to do, um, but it's felt so good. And I dropped uh, a large bag of um, clothes to the uh, charity shop uh, at the weekend and it felt so good. Just a big, heavy, heavy, you know, one of those um, bag for lives. So it was just so much in there and I, I dropped it off and it just felt like, you know, I was taking a load of off my shoulders and leaving it at the, um, at the shop. So that felt good. Uh, today is Tuesday. We've had one jump out, so let's see what messages want to come through. I've got some other decks as well, which I can use to help us with the reading. And um, I'm really sitting on the edge of this um, sofa chair, so I'm just going to see if I can um, bring everything a little bit closer so I'm not right petering at the edge here. That might mean something. That's much better. I was literally almost falling off this sofa. It's funny, isn't it? I set up the camera and then it's like, oh my God, I'm literally like falling off the sofa. Why? What is, what is the relevance of that? Is there something that you feel like you're falling into or falling out of? Or there's a few more cards have come out and we'll take that one as well. Okay. So the underlying which is the bottom of the deck, and we have the King of Swords. So the King of Swords can point to someone who is chatty. It can be sort of the, the Gemini card, so air sign, so Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. So this kind of mind, uh, attitude, mind element, and a real thought process going on, someone who's interested in uh, crosswords and learning and reading and, and AI and uh, communicating and you know emails and um, all types of communication all types of thought all types of ideas are being downloaded he's still remaining very much grounded so he's trying to bring all the information and ground it into the earth with the red which is the very grounding your base chakra and he, he's got his feet firmly on the ground here. There's butterflies all around. So there's this element of transformation which is occurring. And you can see the birds here again, just emphasizing the air element, the clouds emphasizing the air. So we're talking about the mind. We're talking about thought. Um, this character, so it can be a mature man. Uh, and can be any of those signs, doesn't have to be one of those signs. It can be someone who just is very mind focused or intelligent. They can be a little bit cutting, a little bit controlling, um, uh, perhaps say things that might, you know, uh, make you feel um, unsupported in a way. So I'm getting a sense of someone who's quite sharp, sharp with their words, which might actually hurt or might affect you. Um, someone who's happy to take a swipe at you, so swiping you with a sword um, without actually understanding how their words land. So there's a need to communicate better, perhaps. There's a need to learn and transform 
how you communicate, how you deliver uh, what it is that you want to deliver. And this could be to do with social media, could be to do with AI, could be to do with any of those things. But there's this energy coming in of transforming the communication, transforming um, the intellect in some way and grounding it, making it real. Yeah, butterflies all over this. Um, and he, I'm not sure if you can see, but the sword is bringing in the information and his palm is face down. So it's a bit like the magician uh, where the magician's hand is up to the heavens and they're going to transform and bring through the ideas. And then the other hand is pointed down to the ground and they make it real. So it's manifesting from the field and making it real. So there could be some sort of element of that, that information is coming in for you, which you'll be able to practically use in your day to day. So that's the underlying energy. See if any of that resonates, it makes sense. I am tuned in, I ho have opened up my energy and protected my space. Um, so the words that I use often are guided in some way. Um, sometimes I'm just rabbiting on and I don't really understand exactly how the words I use and this might be it as well land with you um so we'll just go through it we'll just explain but hopefully whatever is coming through me will help and make sense to you so the first card for your read for the week is the king of pentacles so the king of pentacles is usually a capricorn uh, so it's earth energy, it's the earth, it's the real world, it's making things manifest on the earth plane. Uh, Taurians are earth signs, Virgos, we're in Virgo now, so it could be a, a pointer to the, the season we're in now, to the month we're in, September. And also it's Capricorn, which is uh, that slower moving, that um, gathering of the fruits of your labor. So the Capricorn is all about, or the pentacles I should say, is all about work, is all about business. This person has achieved a great deal. They've built a certain amount around them and they have their castle, they have their uh, vines bearing fruit, laden with fruit and, and happy to grow. They're very much, um, They've got their earthy, the, the globe here, which is the earthy kind of a sphere of representing the earth and, and there's a little cross on it. So the added element of spiritual um, earthiness, let's say, and the pentacle here. So someone who's in business, someone who's established, someone who has um, been working and created something and it's it's served them well. So it's it's something that's um sustaining and uh, profitable and growing i would say and he's showing one leg here so there's a certain level of uh, this person is happy to show their wealth they're happy to show what they do they're happy to be transparent with what they do so whatever steps they take in their work whatever endeavors they do there's an element of them showing the world they're happy to show the world their wealth they're happy to show the world um their methodology they're happy to show the world and uh, what they've constructed in their life what they've built they're not hiding the big castle in the background and so it points to an element of work it points to an element of uh putting in the hours you know, uh, it's slow and steady wins the race. You know, it might not happen overnight. It might not happen straight away, but there is a building of financial wealth here. There is a building of business success here. This committedness, this focus, this drive to create something that has incredible roots in the earth. So let's just Oh, the incense is wafting past me there. It's awesome. Um, so the roots of these vines, you can see they're coming down here into the ground. So someone who is established, someone who's been working in business and someone who has uh, developed a certain degree of stability uh, within that. So that's how we're starting. We're starting with that element of success. We have created something. So let's just see where that's going. Okay, 
So then we have the Eight of Cups. So the Eight of Cups, we've had that before. Sorry, my nails aren't done. I'm giving my nails a little rest. Um, they do peel a lot uh, when I'm using nail varnish. Um, my nails don't really like the varnish, but um, so they're they're naked today. So apologies, I'm not. I don't have fancy nails. Uh, so the Eight of Cups is a moving away from something. So something is missing. Something has dropped out of your life, dropped out of this element uh, in your life, and it is time to walk away. Now there's a, a, a an incredible emotional attachment to this. There's a, a, you spent a lot of time and a lot of love um, with this, but it is showing that something is not quite right. Something is missing, and you have decided to, to turn your back on it because although you have created a great amount of stability and you've created a great amount of wealth in some fashion, um, it's, just, it's just not fulfilling. There's something missing, and perhaps that's the emotional part. The cups are all about love. The cups are all about emotions. So we can be working away on something, but we're not heart. It's not heart centered business. It's not tied to our heart. It's not giving us that satisfaction that we need. It's it's a job. It's um, you know earning money, earning a profit. But but our our heart is empty at the end of it. Our heart is not fulfilled. Our heart is shouting out for something. Why can't we have a job where we feel that? incredible satisfaction and and love for our work so something's missing so we're, we're, we're moving away and this can be emotional because you know anything to do with um, having to cut cords or break ties is very emotional and um, if you've been doing something for quite a while which you know the the king of pentacles builds something over time over a great deal of time putting in the hours building something then of course you're going to feel emotionally attached to it. Of course you're going to have strong bonds to it. Um, but this is pointing that um, when the moon I is up, uh, this is the new moon. I'm not sure when our new moon is uh, this month. Is it around the 19th? I think we have a full moon and then we have a new moon. I'm not sure which is on the 19th, but it might be pointing towards that sort of timing that suddenly you might have this realization that it's it's time to take a step in a different direction. So however, that, that we'll see how it goes, but however the big step is, the big movement away, uh, you are certainly turning your back on this and looking in a different direction and starting to move. Now, it is uphill. There are great mountain tops here to climb and clamber over to, to see what's happening next. But you are in movement. You have decided to, to take a move. And perhaps it's just diversifying. Perhaps uh, you weren't getting um, the love that you needed. You weren't getting the satisfaction in the direction that you were going. And so you've had to turn around and go in a slightly different direction to get that fulfillment, to get what it is that you need. And what do we have after that? We have the sun card. Now the sun was upside down. I don't usually read upside down, but the sun generally points to you. So it means this is a read for you. And the sun is the best card. The sun is the best card. It's the most joyous, bright, shining. Uh, it's evidence of positivity. It's got the sunflowers, which are the most positive, bright, sunny looking flowers that we can look at. They're so symbolic of the, um, they produce so many seeds. So there's fruitfulness and there's the sunshine that we see in the, in the sunflower. So there's all that goodness, all that juiciness that we see in the sun card. And we can see here that the, the little child is on the white horse and the white horse is moving forward. So it's taking a step. So it is movement. So it's moving forward in this new direction, this bright direction. So the sun is shining here. So it's bright. Now it is upside down. So it would point to me that maybe there's a slight delay in this movement. Maybe you know where you want to go, but you haven't fully grasped uh, how you're going to get there or how how it's going to look or and sun energy is the yang energy, so it's the action. Uh, yin is more 
uh, introspective, yin is more receiving, yang is more outward, yang is more pushing, and the sun is yang, so the sun is what gives you the action and makes you want to push forward in a different direction. You get this idea and you put it into action. That's the yang energy. The yin energy would be meditate on it and see how it percolates a little bit. So the sun is the yang. So maybe there's this period of inaction, not moving. And it's it's about you and your identity because this is all about what you've built and moving on from it into a, a new direction. So there's possibly, because this card represents you, possibly some change in your identity, in how you step forward, in how you feel supported, in your energy. Maybe just mind your energy as you're in this phase because if you transition from one thing to another, um, it's good just to take stock. It's good just to let it percolate. So be a bit more yin. Move a little bit more into the meditative state. Move a bit. Certainly go out and get sunshine. Certainly go out and get your vitamin D. If the sun is shining, do get some sunshine. Be outside if you can. Be in nature if you can, absolutely. Be around animals, horses, that type of energy is very therapeutic. So maybe that's it. So maybe it's, it's rather than rushing forward, maybe just stop and take stock and see how you can implement a few different elements just to help you as you move into a different phase. Because it's never easy changing from one situation to another or moving into a different situation because things have to change and then you have to adapt to these new changes and then they bring with them new elements as well. So there needs to be this just moment of integration of that. Like the butterfly, it's a transformation. So you're you're shifting, you're transforming, you're getting this bright idea and you're you're having to cut a cord to something and move away. But it's 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 in this transition, it's in this integration phase that you're maybe going to discover more about you. Okay? And then we have the hermit. So there might be a period of being by yourself. There might be a period of uh, being alone. Uh, that happens with the hermit. The hermit is very much introspection. So the hermit is that meditation. The hermit is that yin. The hermit is someone who's not eye clubbing every Friday and Saturday night. The hermit would much rather sit at home and read some educational book, gain wisdom, integrate the wisdom learn so they can move forward better. The Hermit uh, is, is emotional as well and this is often the Virgo card and we are in Virgo season again so very much about earthiness, very much about work, very much about shifting that change. Right now in September something is changing for you and you may have had a period of being on your own and that's what the Sun was, it was this stop, it was this pause because the, the hermit is that pause, the hermit is that in between, the hermit is uh, very much, uh, he delves into the wisdom, he gains the wisdom, and that's what lights up the lantern. So he has achieved and downloaded all this wisdom, all this light. He has this at his fingertips, but he wants to move forward with this. So it is about turning your back like we had here turning your back on everything that was because you are using the wisdom that has that is lighting up this lantern so the wisdom is filling the lantern and helping it light up that's almost your higher self and that's guiding you forward so you can step forward following the wisdom of the higher self following the light leaving everything behind you leaving that isolation possibly and then moving forward. You've learned everything, you've learned your lessons, you've done it all, you've integrated it, you've taken a great deal on board, you've had some alone time, and now you're prepared to step out and move forward into life, showing, showing what you've achieved, showing your light, showing yourself to the world. So this is the light within the hermit, and he is using it as a guiding light, but also he is using it for all to see. So those around him who are, you know, in the water or on the shore, 
they can see his light. So it's about shining your light so others can see it. And that might mean moving out of that isolation, moving out of that pause, that integration that you had, and then pursuing something by stepping forward. But it, with wisdom, with higher consciousness, this is all about higher consciousness. The hermit um, doesn't just uh, move forward just like regular thinking. The, the hermit has taken time to... Uh, really sort of delve deep into the mysteries of life and delve deep into the mysteries of what has happened in in his life and learn from it and gain knowledge and um use that use that as stepping stones going forward and he has uh the, there's a little snake there at his feet as well so the snake is is like the kundalini so there's a reference to kundalini rising here which we've heard about quite a bit that's happening to people but also happens when you are in service when you're offering your light to people and um, your kundalini naturally rises as well so if you and virgos are very much in service Vir virgos are very much the people who want to help with health nutrition uh, they can be doctors they can be alternative health practitioners but they're very much the people who go in wanting to help other people with their body with their health physical um, health nutrition health uh, recovery from disease and and moving into healing in some way um so the the snake can represent that because that's around the symbol for medicine and that and health also kundalini but also the snake is about transformation so shedding that skin so you are going to move into a phase now where you can take the skin the old skin it's to be removed so you can shine in you so you can show yourself in your new clothes and maybe that's part of it. Maybe that's what all the, the decluttering is about. And I said this to a friend recently. You know, every, all the clothes that I had built up that I couldn't fit into anymore. Um, just as a side, uh, I, I've, I've sent it off to uh, charity. But when I was looking at it and letting it go, it was, well, I am not the person who fitted into those clothes. But also, if I was going shopping now, I'd be shopping for something different. My tastes have actually changed a bit. Some things... I still love certain things, but actually I wouldn't want to wear these again. I want to wear something different. I want to wear something new and different that really works with my body, works with my attitude, works with my uh, who I am now, what I'm comfortable wearing now. Um, and that can be flashy. It doesn't have to be modest or boring. It can be flashy, but if that's what I am now then and as long as it fits and it's comfortable then that's what I want to get I don't want to be trying to fit into all this old stuff so it's shedding that old skin letting the old skin the old you go so you can reveal like the skin comes off and you reveal your new skin and it's lovely that it's happening now in Virgo time September for many people is like a new month, but it's it's a new year for many, the new school year. And it has this energy of new year where you go back to your yoga class, you go back to your Pilates class, you know, you start to get in, you know, people go on holiday during the summer, timetables are over the place, the kids are at playgroups and clubs and surfing and whatever. And everything's a bit of a mis mismatch during summer. But September seems to get us into line again, get us into a timetable, get us into a structure. And that's good as well. So we're taking off our old skin, shedding it, and moving into autumn with this new structure in place. So let's see what the final card was. And it was upside down as well. Don't normally read upside downs, but we'll see where we go with this. So two of wands. So two of wands in the correct position, which still has the energy of that, is someone who has the great idea, the passionate idea, the fiery, creative uh, endeavor that they want to step forward in. And they've done a little bit of work in that. They've taken some action and they have created two wands. So it's not complete fulfillment just yet. We haven't got there, but there's certainly a great... Um, grounding of the idea there's a great building of this creativity and someone is not going to let go of this there's you know it's like it's not going to go anywhere you you've built it enough so it's stable it's secure 
And then there's the possibility of adding more creativity to it, bringing it to the next phase. Okay, bear with. Bringing it to the next phase, which is the second wand. This can also be someone who is at distance from someone. So if you're in a distance, long distance relationship, if you're a distance from someone, you're kind of looking out to the horizon and thinking about them and wondering about them. And this can be someone or something that you're passionate about, that you have this fiery connection with. And you're kind of on the edge of this castle and you're just staring out to the horizon and you're wondering about them, thinking about them. And there's an ocean between you. So you might be separated by someone uh, via this ocean, via this water. And so you might feel a bit like the hermit because you can see the hermit is here um, and there's water here and they're on their own. So you might be like shining your light like the lighthouse and saying, can you see that I'm trying to reach out to you, communicate with you across the waters? Um, so it could be that. It could be something to do with someone who's a bit, a, a bit far away from you, who's at distance from you. Um, and you've got the salamander here, which is that changing, so things are changing. And there's the, the ones are also very much of nature. So we need to connect with nature. So he's in this castle, which is all built around him, but his fiery ones are about nature and connecting to nature and creative ideas. Um, so you might feel a little bit like you're this creative person who's got these ideas and you're building a certain amount um, and you're looking out to the future, but you're stuck in a concrete jungle. You're stuck in this jungle and there's not enough uh, nature or... Um, fertility for 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 it to really take off so you're looking to the future for ideas you're looking to the future to kind of plan you say what are my plans how am i going to plan this how am i going to change things you know you're examining your world examining where you are examining where you want to be how can i move forward in this in balance as well we've got the two which is always about balance so balance in my yin balance in my yang balance in my feminine balance in my masculine balancing how much i give balancing how much i receive so it's definitely a, a big lesson in the two of ones here and that we need to take note of that we're standing firm we're solid you know this idea that we're moving forward with isn't going anywhere but we gotta get down to the nitty-gritty and i start planning properly to, to extend it to the next phase we've got a plan we've got a maybe work internationally so this could be internationally working across the waters um and seeing into the future so what is it that you want it to look like where it's like bringing the future to you so you have all these ideas and goals and things that you set ahead and then how are you going to bring that to you how are you going to bring that to the now what decisions are you going to make what planning are you going to make it's like you know, the castle here has got lots of little bricks and stuff. So everything is a brick, a brick, a brick, which adds to the building. You know, the building doesn't just come as a building. You, brick by brick by brick, which is the, the King of Pentacles, slowly working, slowly adding the bricks in, the bricks in, the bricks in to build the walls. So very much uh, it's about work. It's about uh, challenging yourself to, to move forward in a slightly new direction emotionally having to make that choice make that step because your heart isn't in it something dropped out of it there's just there's just not enough pull uh, for you emotionally anymore something's dropped out of it so you're you're deciding to move away in a different direction um, you're deciding to go with the flow you're deciding to Feel where you're pulled, where you're drawn, where the tide is bringing you, where the current brings you. It's like letting go and let the current bring you. Um, and, and that's going to take a little bit of transitioning. That's going to take a little bit of identity change. Uh, that's going to take a little bit of um, action with the yang, but also um, introspection and pause with the yin. So because it's upside down, we've got the yang and the yin, but the energy of the sun is still here, but it's just reduced a little. So I think we've got a bit of both there. So it's just that integration, because you don't go fully into something brand new. You, you kind of have to let the residual energy of the old go and a new energy start to come in. And then it kind of melds, melds in the two. So you've got the old and you've got the new. 
So you've got the information from the old because we had the the um, the hermit who's all about the past, all about everything you've learned, the wisdom you've gained and moving forward with that. So you've got that and then you've got the new. So here you are with all of this information, all of this creativity and you're looking out onto the future and say, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make it work? What plans am I going to make happen? Because, you know, the ones are action. Uh, wand cards are Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So they're very much doers. So there's an element of doing something with the past and the future, doing or past and present, doing something to bring the future closer, to bring your ideals closer. So big change is happening here. Let's see what else we can do. I'm just going to go to a colour straight away. We've done half an hour already. Oh my God. Um, Let's see if we can get a helpful colour uh, from my uh, colour deck. Really nice deck. And sometimes it just gives us uh, a reminder and it can be a colour that we should wear. Um, I'm just going to fan through it and pick it through that way. I don't know what I'm picking. Um, but just a colour that will match the reading and help us. Um, if we wear the colour, we can meditate with the colour. We can put the colour up in a room and just look at the colour and absorb the vibration because colour is just vibration. So when you sit in front of a colour, you're physically absorbing it and you absorb it through your eyes, you absorb it in your body. It's a frequency. So um, colour is very important. So we're going to go with the top one on this, which is plum. We've had plum before. And Plum says, overcome your challenges. And it's four and one, which is a five. And it's almost like the light that the um, the hermit had. So in, in the midst of everything, light will shine. In the midst of everything, you'll see this lantern. So this was the lantern, the lighthouse that's calling out. So eat plums, I think, is one of the things that comes from uh, this... Um, deck but I'll just get to the uh, the relevant page and let you know what Plum says. So Plum is a colour of devotion, dedication and commitment that connects you to your heart and life purpose. Okay well that's what we were getting. Heart centred, moving forward and life purpose of course. Creating deep bonds in friendships and relationships, it also assists you to stay strong through hardships and difficult situations. Plum is a colour of deep inner strength and faith. Use plum rays to overcome challenges and discover your life purpose. If you're facing something difficult, make sure you surround yourself with plum. Wear plum clothes, shoes or jewellery. Eat plums. Paint with this colour or visualize a ray of plum to soothe your heart and soul. Find the gift in this challenging experience and allow its insights to come into your mind. It says, the affirmation is, Divine Spirit, please use the plum ray to guide me through any challenges I may experience with ease, grace and softness. And plum is a beautiful color and it's a beautiful autumnal color as well. So it's kind of like that burgundy, that deep, rich, a plumbing, plumbing, I guess, um, color that, you know, and it's, it's like a, you know, a good burgundy or a um, Shiraz or a, a Sauvignon, that deep red, plummy kind of color. So maybe a nice glass of wine, which is plummy uh, undertones to it might be nice. I'm thinking dark chocolate and plummy undertones in a nice glass of wine might be nice. You know, oh God, I haven't had a glass of wine or alcohol in so long. Um, so maybe that of an evening might be nice just to settle you in and spark that creativity because sometimes alcohol can do that, can open your insight a little bit, not too much, um, as in a little bit of alcohol, um, can just spark that creativity, that openness um, to allow you to receive more of the light here so you can see it's kind of coming billowing in so beautiful and i love that it's like the hermit's lantern as well just lighting up the dark so using the plum color that rich rich color for autumn 
beautiful. That's what I would like, you know. I've given away a lot of summer clothes and I would like to get some nice, rich, deep colours for autumn. And let me just see if there's another colour because, gosh, I'm just loving the colour right now. Um, is there another colour that might help us? Just something to go with plum. Because um, maybe you don't have plum in your wardrobe. But you can go buy plum. Do you know those really deep plums? That deep rich colour. Sometimes you get almost black plums. You peel the skin off and it's got that gorgeous colouring underneath. That richness. Um, can we get a colour? Colour to go along with plum. I love that one. Oh, beautiful. So we've got pink, which is let love in. And the pink and green is the heart. So this is the heart energy that's coming in. And it's because we're moving forward in our purpose, we are going to overcome our challenges. And that's going to allow us to be directed by the heart, to work with that loving energy. We've had to leave something that was emotionally disturbing to leave it or to step away from it in some way. And this is, oh my God, it's a four. It's a four, which is about stability, which is about foundations, which is about building something. So you're getting your foundations in order, but these are new foundations because they are love uh, based foundations, pink, I love pink. I've got pink all over my house. Um, one of my favorite colors is pink, but it's the heart. It's the heart centered business. So this is saying move forward into your business from the heart. So we have to detach from what was shift and change like the caterpillar into the butterfly. We're changing and then we're using all of that wisdom that we have and we're stepping forward, balancing both sides, bringing the past into the present and seeing where we want to go in the future and making plans. And we're using plum to help us overcome the challenges and we're using the pink and maybe a little bit of green, but certainly the pink to help us with our emotional side, to help comfort us. Pink is very soothing. If you've had a fright, uh, you can have wrap yourself in a pink blanket. It's very sedating. It's calming. So you need that. You need that for that um, pause. You need that little bit of comfort because it's difficult to let something go. And it's going to have an effect. So there needs to be this understanding of allowing the heart to heal, allowing that, that heart-centered desire to step forward listening to the heart so we had the the mind the mind was all about the mind but this changing this challenge of the mind and bringing it down to, to here to change it to make it into something real and uh, this transformation with all of the butterflies here lots of transformation energy but mind and now we're moving into the heart and we're saying let love in so let love into your life but also loving work loving centered business is the way to go forward beautiful and pink and plum i mean they go very well together don't they they're just beautiful together um gorgeous colors and uh, really complement each other actually i hope you can see that color because it just to me it just seems very complimentary um and 41 and four so four is one four four is one of the cards and four and one which is five is the other, so four and five, uh, which is interesting as well. So let's go to Archangel Michael and see if he can give us some information. We are flying through this today. The, um, the guides are obviously on point and giving us plenty to talk about. Um, I face the window, so it's the window light that you're seeing, if you're seeing any um, light on the cards. I haven't put up my um, ring light in a while. Um, so Archangel Michael, can you give us some advice? Okay, thank you. Um, um, oh, that's two. And we'll take one more, shall we? Archangel Michael, one more card of advice. Oops, there we go. So when one has dropped out. So I, uh, oh, two have dropped out. So I don't know what they are yet. So first one is sense of humor. So, you know, lighten it up. You know, don't get too serious. Don't get too worried about it. 
Uh, it's very grey out there. It's almost like it's going to rain. And I love being inside, doing things I enjoy, like tarot reading. Um, I've just had a Pilates class. I did an hour of Pilates and then I chatted to the owner for a little while afterwards because we always like to catch up after. And it was just such a nice way to spend sort of lunchtime. And now I'm doing the tarot read and it's sort of a bit dark and grey outside. And it's just so nice. I love that being cosy and just doing things that, you know, heart centered that make you joyous. Anyway, uh, sense of humor. So keep it light. You know, don't let it get to you. Um, you'll look back on things and you'll laugh about them, right? That's what we always say. You know, you'll laugh about stuff that happened in the past. So it's important to remember that. It says, thank you for helping me see the humor in the situation so I can lovingly laugh at human nature. I am willing to view my experience in a new light in order to attract love and healing energy. So it is about... Um, being willing to laugh and laugh changes your vibration, which then attracts uh, that high energy to you. So laughter uh, raises your vibration. Yo laughter yoga uh, is something that people do and it's very good for the physical body, very good for the mind, very healing. Um, so you might want to try laughter yoga. Um, but certainly as well, when you're going through this transition, there are going to be other people involved in some way, some fashion, like it's not just you on the planet, there are other people. So sometimes people will uh, encourage you, sometimes people will, will try and um, prevent you maybe getting t too far ahead of yourself. Um, and you just have to laugh at people in their different ways because it's only because of their programming, etc. So there needs to be this element of, have a sense of humour, have a lightness to it. Don't get too, um, you know, it's almost like I can hear arguments and frustrations with people and how that can blow up and become this whole thing. But keep it, keep it chills, keep it light, you know, have a laugh with it. Um, let's see what the other cards say. You are guarded and protected. So this is Archangel Michael coming in saying, during this phase, you are guarded and protected. So know that. Know that this is a transition and that you should feel that you can rely on Archangel Michael to look out for you and to protect you as you move into this new phase. It says, thank you for protecting my loved ones and me, ensuring that we're safe and that all our needs are met in case that there's that scarcity element. I now accept your help gratefully and gracefully, knowing that it is right for me and all others to accept heavenly assistance and you can see he's wrapped in the green here and we talked about the the heart center which is a green and pink and um, so you've got the heart energy here certainly moving forward in this heart centered way to know that you're guided and protected guarded and protected as well as guided and protected and so it's always good, especially if you are moving forward in business in some way, you can bring in the angels to protect your business. You can bring in the angels to surround your business for wealth, for health, for sustainability, for uh, growth, all these things that you want your business to do. The business is an energetic, um, uh, what would you say, a pocket, pocket of energy. Um, as well as being what it is, it has an energetic signature, and uh, you can you can send love around that. You can send healing around that. You can ask Archangel Michael to guard it and protect it and help it grow. The green is growth to help it grow and thrive. And what did I say? Ask them to help you with this. So it says, lean on God and the angels for support. So ask them to come in and help you support with this business. Ask them to come in and guide you with this business. Ask them to come in and give you those ideas. When you're holding the two wands and you're looking out into the future, you don't have to do it by yourself. You can ask for assistance. And it says, dear God and angels, I give you this, and it could be this situation that you're transforming through, whatever situation. I give it to you now and completely, what is it? I give this da, 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 now and completely, okay. So you give this, this element to God and the angels completely and you give it to them now. And you say, I step out of the way and allow divine miracles to shine through everyone and everything involved. So this is bringing that holiness to your business. 
that everyone that you're involved with, everyone that you have a discussion with, a meeting with, an interaction with, that the divine is there helping you and working through these people to help your business grow, to help your business thrive. To, so you meet the right people. So the people come along and give you a bit of information, but that bit of information is exactly what you needed. So it's divinely use. It's the divine using people all around you to help you. I step out of the way and I allow divine miracles to shine through everyone and everything involved. And that's lovely. It's, it's, it's using that uh, angelic energy, that divine energy, that surrendering. If you've got an issue, a challenge that you feel is too much, surrender it and allow a miracle to come in and unravel it. The final card from Michael is Innocence. I always love the picture in this card. It looks so nice, doesn't it? So he's there and he's got that little puppy, tiny little puppy there. So the innocence of that youth, the innocence of the puppy. And it says, Dear God and angels, thank you for helping me see that all your qualities of pure light and love are reflected within me and all others. Help me embrace my God-given innocence so that I may be at peace. So thank you for helping me see that all of your qualities of pure love and light are reflected with in me and all others. So if you're thinking of heart-centered business, if you're thinking of stepping out and shining your light, if you're thinking of shedding the old, taking off the old snakeskin and revealing yourself, know that the qualities of pure love and light are within you. And that is what you're shining out to the world. That is what you're reflecting. You have got rid of the old. You've stepped away from the old modalities. That could be the King of Pentacles, the old way of doing it, the old establishments, the old structures, the old way things were done. And you're stepping away from that and you're stepping into this new endeavor, light-filled, love-filled, and that with this innocence, knowing that you have light within you you have light and love that you want to bring to the world in this caring way in you know you're looking at the world or this pup you're looking at it with care and attention and kindness and you can see the sort of the innocence the god-given innocence that is within everybody and that again goes to on those people who will approach you those people who will be with you at their center and at their core they have god-given if um innocence so see them with, see them with wings, um, see yourself with wings. Um, let's get another card. Certainly moving into some sort of new uh, work thing for sure. Um, let's go to the Lenormand, which is a nice little one by Alexander Ray. Um, so this just gives us pictures, which then um, we. Um, try and understand the meaning. So let's get a couple just in relation to this and then we might finish with a dragon. I know we've got dragons out as well. Um, hope you're well. If any of it resonates, do let me know. You can leave a comment below. I always love to see your comments and read your comments and I read them all. And uh, if you want to share this with someone that you think it resonates with, then please do share. Um, so let's see what the the Norland, the Normand, the Normand, God, I can't say it. Um, and I hope you're well. Thank you to all the new viewers. Thank you to the new subscribers. Uh, saw you subscribing recently. So thank you to that. And I hope this helps and makes sense to you. And to all my regular watchers as well. Thank you for uh, your attention and for staying to the end. Um, but it usually uh, kind of, all comes together towards the end and makes sense so um, it's just a really interesting way to read with all these different elements so okay I'm not really getting this I'm going to do the same thing again I'm going to take two from the top let's do another one it looks like it's going to rain I love this I love being inside I used to love that when I was young when I was very wee um, if it was raining outside 
and we'd, you know, as children, the fire would be on and we'd be sitting around the fire and uh, I'd get a colouring book out and I used to love just colouring when the fire's on and it's raining outside. Oh, it was my favourite thing. Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. So we've got Coffin. Uh, so Coffin here, I'm going to read it as um, something is dying. Something is ending in order for the new phase to begin. Uh, so it's pointing to this ending of this thing that you're moving away from. So there's no more life left in it. And you might have felt that it was a little bit like you were either dragging your body there like a dead body, like there was no energy, or you felt like after your day at work that you felt deadened, that you felt uh, unsatisfied, unalive. You know, it's not giving you life anymore. So there's this need to recognize that heavy energy that maybe you arrive home and you just feel heavy, you don't feel alive, you feel tired, you just want to lie down. Um, so this coffin energy is coming in with that. And there needs to be that element of setting yourself free. When, when someone passes, their spirit is set free. Their spirit rises. Their spirit goes towards the light and the heavens and the other worlds, the other spaces. And so this is saying it's time to almost drop that uh, physical, as in, you know, with death, you drop the physical body, but drop that heaviness, drop that old life, because there is a new life coming in. And the new life, it could be with a new man, um, because we've got a little heart here. So whatever newness you're moving away from, I might have to look at this completely differently and look at it like a love read. Um, but there is a man coming in. So this can be someone who's giving you wisdom, someone who's giving you business support. Um, it can be somebody that you're moving away from or you're having to, you know, it could be like a manager that you're having to move away from. It could be somebody that gives you a little bit of grief here, but you're to see the light of everyone and the innocence of everyone, remember. Um, but uh, it's 28, so 8, 9, 10. So 10 is number one. Um, and that's new start. So there's a new start. So this male may come in to help you with this new start. They may come in with information, with advice. Uh, it might be a romance uh, that you meet someone on this new journey. So often you can go through a, a, a change phase in your life where certain things change. And for example, say if you worked in a, a building uh, for 10 years and then you decided to up and leave and go on this uh, journey towards something new, to build something new and you were starting and you ended up working in a different end of the town or a different end of the city and then you met this person. So you wouldn't have met them at the other place because you were in the wrong location and they have moved you to a new location so you can meet this person. So this person can walk into your life. So let me just see if I can pick another one because let's see if we can get any more information on that. Hmm. We're almost done, people. We're almost done. Okay, put that there. Uh, crossroads. Okay, so this is the two. Again, this is one way or the other way. This is, uh, we are at this position where we are at this crossroads. We're making a decision. And it's 22. So 22 is that balancing of the twos, balancing of your internal and external, balancing of work and life, balancing of your emotions and your your sort of your heart and your mind. So your emotions and your thoughts um, and also what direction are you going to go in? So here we've definitely got two different signs going in two different ways. And we ha are at this point of crossroads. So very much right now, you're at this point of decision making. You're at this point of moving in a new direction. You just haven't quite um, made the decision on what that direction is going to be. So I'm going to now just see if we've got a dragon to help us just to finish off the read. Um, see if any of the dragons. And um, what we can do with dragon energy is just kind of embody the energy of the dragons uh, we can ask for this particular dragon to come forward and help us with what we're doing and um, with what we're working on 
they love coming in and helping now so uh, dragons are certainly um, etheric uh, animals etheric vibrations that we can work with um, so let's ask for one to come in and help us and which one is going to come in and help us and you can call in this dragon all week you can bring them into your home and you can ask them to sit with you when you meditate and see if they can assist with um, changing the frequency of see how they were jumping changing the frequency of um, your vibration so we've got a few oh gosh we've got three do we have time for three um so first one is earth and maybe i'll go through it quickly so we've got earth and fire dragon so look at that so connected to the ley lines connected to the ground that uh, river of fire almost and then we've got the the celtic symbols here so there may be some shamanic uh, celtic druid type you know this, this is stone stonehenge that type of energy coming in as well it says it works with you to clear the fifth dimensional ley lines it's time for service when you give you receive so we talked about that the light what you were shining the light to be in service. I said about the Kundalini, the Kundalini can rise naturally when you're of service. So this earth and fire dragon is clearing the ley lines underneath your home, but also underneath perhaps where you're going to be working, but also around the earth helps clear these ley lines around the earth to help the earth level up so the consciousness raises so then your work is there and to be received and appreciated so it is time for service when you give you receive so remember that when you're giving out to the world it will come back it's a cycle it's a circle it's this holy spirit circle and this um circles and spirals are all uh, symbols of spirit so this is all about the soul and the spirit. So connecting with that element. So do, by all means, call in the earth and fire dragon and see if you can work on the ley lines. And you can ask them to, you know, if you're moving forward uh, some way uh, in a new location or a business venture where you need a new office or a new um, premises, you can ask the dragons to clear the ley lines under um, this new building, this new premises, whatever it's going to be. Um, to help you, uh, to, 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 so you can go and work there. And then we have a lilac fire dragon. Look at that with all the beautiful lilac and flowers. Gorgeous cards. And uh, it says transmute, tra blah, 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 transmutes through the power of divine love. Open up to transcendent love and enlightenment. Purity of heart brings peace, hope and joy. And I think that matches with the innocence card. So this moving forward into, as with all of Archangel Michael's, into working with God, working with the angels, working with that purity of heart. We are guarded, we are protected, but we must remember to work with that high vibrational love, that enlightenment, that wisdom from the hermit that's lighting everything up, that enlightenment. We have to work with that. Whatever business adventure or whatever we're going forward in, this is the energy that we want to go forward in. And that brings uh, purity of heart, peace, hope and joy. So when, when we are in that uh, vibration, then those things uh, come in that are connect with our hearts, our heart centered. So lilac fire dragon. So two fire dragons, which is interesting. We had two wands, which is the fire. And then we have Archangel Gabriel's dragon. And there's a beautiful diamond at the center of the chest there. Diamond energy, white, white diamond energy. It's interesting because when I do grounding and opening up my energy to do these sessions uh, and I bring in different energies and today I brought in the white diamond. So that makes sense to me. And he also has a diamond up here. Can you see there's a diamond there as well? And it says it brings purification. So that's like the innocence as well, clearing away what and uh, walking away as well. The Eight of Cups, clearing away, washing away, walking away to bring in that clarity, bring in that heart center, bring in that purification. It says self-discipline will speed ascension and bring joy. You can carry Archangel Gabriel's diamond. Let me just read that one a little bit because you might need more on that. Um, 
Archangel Gabriel's diamond. Quite a few to go through here. There we go. And then this is the last one. So I, I'm probably going to go over the hour. Try and be quick. Fifth dimensional diamond white dragons serve Archangel Gabriel, the mighty, pure white angel of clarity, joy and hope. When we are ready to connect more deeply to him, his dragons shine their crystal light into our energy fields and physical body, allowing deep cleansing and purification to take place. They light up our true essence and we become transparent to the spiritual world. This means that all lower energies that have not been released from our auric field become visible. So it is important to forgive, love and respect ourselves and others so that our aura becomes totally clear. The dragons will rejoice, for we are ready to walk the diamond ascension path. They will lead the way, clearing and energizing our sparkling new high frequency journey and bringing us clarity, hope and joy so that Archangel Gabriel, with his diamond wings, can overlight us. Those words, overlight us, like the hermit with the light. Receiving this card implies you are expected to cooperate with Archangel Gabriel's diamond white dragons, using self-examination and self-discipline to accelerate your ascension. The dragons can then illuminate you internally with happiness, clarity and higher expectation. You will become a shining beacon and will automatically radiate light that shows others the way. You have earned the right to be walking to be a walking master. You will carry in your fields the glorious light of Archangel Gabriel's cosmic diamond, which is a life transforming ascension tool. The diamond white dragons will swirl and dance around you, ensuring that the glittering, shimmering cosmic diamond stay securely in place over your energy fields. It will protect your aura and fill you with joy, purity and bliss. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. So you're moving up. That is the light that the hermit was carrying, moving into ascension, moving in this new direction. Perhaps that was it all along. The king of pentacles is earthy. So there's this walking away from that and it's emotional attachment you have to everything earthy and you're stepping forward into this new light filled projected uh, pathway and you're moving forward. Yes, it feels like a crossroads because you're leaving the old and you're moving around the corner to something new. But you have the lilac fire dragon, you have Archangel Michael's dragon and you have the earth and fire dragons to help you and assist you. You're letting go of the old, you're shedding the old, the dead, old, unhelpful situation, whatever that may be, is you're shedding it and you're becoming a new. So it's kind of talking about declutter in a whole different way. So thank you in a wholly different way. That's interesting. I want to say whole and it was holy. Thank you for watching if you've stayed this long. I hope that makes sense. I hope it helps out. hope you've got some information that um, resonates, but also you've got a couple of colors there that you can use for the week and see if it just shifts your energy. And as it shifts your energy, things will come in. Ideas will come in. People will come in. And to see the truth and the light in everyone, because we're all transforming. We're all trying to you know, shed the old, who we were, what we thought we were, um, what we were programmed to be and we're now embracing our truth which is light and not only that by shedding that old skin and by shining our light we are in service and we're moving forward in service to share, share our light with everyone around us thank you very much for watching if you stay to the end that is so kind of you uh, do give us a thumbs up it will just really really help and um, I hope to see you again soon Take care of yourselves and if you want to tune in to one of my channelings that might be coming up uh, next to this so I'll be doing this later. Blessings, nice to see you, uh, 10th of September, have a great week and do feedback to me if any of it makes sense and resonates because I do like feedback. Take care, thank you, bye.